What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are going to be continuing this Puppet Master review series and now we're on to Blade Iron Cross which is the first solo kind of standalone film that they've ever done like outside of you know naming it Puppet Master and stuff like that so very very exciting you know Blade is probably the most beloved character in the franchise in terms of the puppets so for him to get the first standalone movie just makes the most sense and this one continues story-wise right after access termination so today we're going to talk about my positives and negatives and the rating for blade iron cross so let's get into this roll it So Blade Iron Cross is a 2020 film, and this is, like I said, the first standalone film, and it is actually under the Full Moon banner of, I believe it's Full Moon 10 banner, and they actually produced this film in front of a live studio audience, so I thought that was like quite exciting. That's a fascinating fact. And then also, this is, like I said, continuing the Access Termination story as we follow Eliza, the daughter of the psychic from the previous film, as she goes on a revenge spree against Dr. Hauser with Blade as her main weapon. So that's what's kind of fascinating with this film is it's just, it's a very unique, just revenge story type film and basic, you know what I mean? It is it a good film. Uh, I don't want to necessarily say that, but let's get into some positives right away is that, you know, Blade, he's my favorite of the puppets. So for him to get his own standalone movie, even though he doesn't get the coolest action sequences and it's not the best movie and the greatest puppetry work, it's cool to see Blade getting his own movie and having Eliza back and having that connective tissue of, you know, it really being with the Access trilogy and stuff like that. I like that as well. So we're still following the same story. It's not jumbled out of continuity or anything like that. Another thing we can say about this movie is we got boobies, boobies and a lot of a lot of beautiful ladies so that's also a fun fun fact you know what i mean so yeah that those two things like you know it always goes a long way when you know the puppet masters you go to them and they have this kind of sleazy nature to them you know what i mean they always have this vibe to them and i like that factor you know you know a little little kind of like medium soft core porn aspect to it so that's always a fun factor of these films and I think our actors do a fantastic job, like Roy Amberson, Tanea Fox, and Angelica Brions. I think they all do a great job. Those are some of the lead actors in this film. And, like, I don't think the acting's that bad It's or anything like that. Like I said, all that stuff's really cool that I just talked about for positives and stuff. It's more towards let's lean into now the mixed and negatives is mainly the story and the writing itself kind of thing. It's just... We've kind of seen, you know, the whole Nazi crazy doctor trying to make the undead army. We're kind of repeating that and rehashing that again. And all the dialogue and all that kind of stuff, it's not really that great. Like I said, the actors, they do the job, I think, for what they were told to do. I just don't think the dialogue's that great. I do find it fascinating that they did film this in front of a live studio audience, mainly to show like the directors and the audience members like what it kind of takes to go into special effects and like doing these certain things. So I thought that was quite fascinating and all that. But yeah, in terms of the story overall, it's not it's it's basic and it's not one that I feel like deserves to be in this Puppet Master franchise. And by the time you get to Blade Iron Cross. After you experience the three Axis films, you get into Axis Termination. They're kind of hammering this psychic thing into the ground now. Another thing with this film is it's just criminally boring, and that's what sucks too. Is it there's points in this film where it's just very boring, and I wasn't happy with it. I was like, damn, like really, like it just has this like awkward thing where it doesn't grab me. And usually with the Puppet Master films, I'm into them. I'm intrigued by the story. I love the puppetry work, and the, there's characters that I can grab onto, and I love. And then this one is just, yeah, it's kind of criminally boring. And that's one thing that, for me, that's a big thing with movies. I can watch a lot of films and I can, the movies can do so many egregious, crazy things. And like, I'll still stick it through to the end. But like when I, when you're becoming kind of a slow, drag on, boring type film and I'm losing interest and I'm wanting to check my phone or check the time or I'm wanting to get up and like get snacks, that's, that's not a good thing for me. I think it's awesome though we have this weird interesting creepy like flirty line dialogue scene with like Eliza and Blade where she's yeah she's she's naked a lot to Nea Fox like give it up she's got a freaking gorgeous body um yeah she gets seen by like Blade and he's watching her like get dressed and like brush her hair and she has like a flirty teasy line with him so it's like puppets and 
humans what so yes blade iron cross mainly another huge negative for me is that like it is kind of a letdown because this is a blade film i love the fact that he was the puppet they chose to do a movie about as a solo movie to first branch out to but i just hate the fact that it was was this bad like this one's pretty low on my list and not one that i'm eager to return to you know what i mean like i definitely would watch this again because i respect the franchise so much i will definitely return to this film because this was one that was a first time watch for me but yeah it just was one that I, it really did let me down in terms of what i wanted in that department of entertainment and being the first blade type solo film i was like damn they could have went and had so much more and especially with the revenge plot thing we just you know focusing on more things but i think it was kind of a more of a project passion type piece type film. And I could understand that aspect from Charlie Band and Full Moon, the production company, that it was more probably like a passion project type thing, something that they wanted to execute. And if they if it worked for them and it did everything they wanted it to do, I'm very happy for them. But yeah, this one definitely could have been more entertaining. So we have to nail down a rating for Blade Iron Cross. And for me, the Blade Iron Cross film is gonna get a four out of 10, very just mediocre, good time. You know what I mean? Like I love the aspect that it, like I said, connects to the access films. We got some good actors in it and I think they do a job for what they're asked to do. They do it fine. We got some beautiful ladies in here that you don't mind looking at, so that doesn't hurt. And this is a kind of short film too. That's another thing. It's, it's about like only an hour and 15 minutes, so it's not gonna demand you sitting down that long or anything like that. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions on Blade Iron Cross. That means I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section, share your thoughts on this film. And because these are just my thoughts. So let's get down in the comments and discuss what we want to talk about. But be sure to like and subscribe because next we're going to be on to Littlest Reich. And then comes the ranking video. So you don't want to miss a thing. Make sure you press that subscribe button and the notification bell is on. But most importantly, you always know, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.